Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to evaluate inverse trig expressions. To get started, let's review some of the formulas that um, are going to guide the problem solving process, okay? So the first um, set of formulas we're going to take a look at illustrates the relationship between a function and its inverse, okay? So let's start with the sine function. What happens when you take the sine of the inverse sine of an angle theta? If you take the sine of the inverse sine of theta, what happens is that the sine and the inverse sine cancel each other out and you're left with theta. The same applies with cosine. If you take cosine of the inverse sine or arc cosine of theta, you end up with theta. Same with tan. If you take tan of the inverse tan of theta, which can be written as arc tan of theta, what happens is that the tan and the inverse tan or arc tan cancel out since they are inverse trig functions and you're left with theta. Same applies to the reciprocal trig functions. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so if you take the cosecant of the arc cosecant or inverse cosecant of theta, you get theta. If you take the secant of the inverse secant of theta, you end up with theta. And then if you find the cotangent of the inverse cotangent of theta, you have the same cancellation action happening and you will end up with theta also. Okay? Alright. Um, another formula that you want to keep in mind is Sokatoa. Okay? Basically shows the relationship between a pair of sides and one of the non-right angles of a right triangle. Okay? So what does Sokatoa tell us? Sokatoa tells us that um, sine that is the so part of an angle is the opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so let's just let's just draw a right triangle um, for your visual reference. So if we have a right triangle and we're just focusing on one of the um, one of the angles that's not right. So let's just call this theta, okay? So if you have this angle theta, this is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse, the longest side. And this is the adjacent right here. Okay, so sine is um, opposite over hypotenuse. And then we can also figure out the remaining five um, inverse streak functions, okay? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse tangent from toa tan theta is what? tan theta is opposite over adjacent okay so with this three we can generate the inverse trig um, ratios if you reciprocate sine you get cosecant cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent you get that by flipping cosine tan is the reciprocal of tan is cotangent so cotangent theta is going to be adjacent over opposite all right so these are the six trig ratios using Sokatoa okay and then you also have to remember your Pythagorean theorem um, the Pythagorean theorem is let's write that down Pythagorean theorem now there are two ways you can look at the Pythagorean theorem um, the one that most people remember is a square plus b square equals c square. The sum of the square of the leg length of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, right? So in this setup that we have right here, um, this is our a, this is our b, and this right here is our c. So can I? rewrite this formula using adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse? The answer is yes, absolutely. a squared plus b squared equals c squared can also be written as the adjacent square plus the opposite square 
is equal to the hypotenuse square. Okay, so this is a trig version of the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to be implementing um, this format in this the examples we're doing, okay? Because it's easier and quicker. All right. Um, another thing that you want to keep in mind has to do with the fact that an angle can be written um, using all six inverse trig functions. Okay, so you notice how we have sine of theta, cosine of theta. All these are in terms of theta. Now, if we have theta isolated, in these six cases, what we'll have is six different ways to write theta. In the first case, if we take the inverse sine of both sides, what do you get? If you take the inverse sine of both sides, you have theta is equal to the arc sine or the inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse. Guess what? This ratio can be written in five other ways. If I isolate theta here, I will get another form of theta, which is the inverse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse is also equal to theta. And if I get theta isolated here, this entire thing is the same thing as the inverse tan or the arc tan of opposite of adjacent, which is equal to the inverse or arc cosecant of hypotenuse of a opposite, which is equal to the arc secant of hypotenuse over adjacent, which is equal to the arcotangent of adjacent over opposite. So what's the benefit of knowing all this um, six equivalent forms of writing theta? Well, um, in some problems we're going to be looking at, we'll try to manipulate one of the functions so that we can have a scenario where we're taking a function of its inverse where cancellation action happens and we can have a simplified form of the expression. Okay. So what are we, am I talking about? Let's take a look at question one. Question one, let's say we were to evaluate a sine of the arc sine of four over seven. Okay, so this is a problem. All right, let's take a look at what the solution is. So sine of the arc sine of one over seven, what is it? Well, we can, let's rewrite arc sine in another format, okay? Just to illustrate that it's an inverse. This is the same thing as looking for or evaluating the sine of the inverse sine of four over seven. So since these two functions are inverses, what happens? They cancel each other out and your final answer is four over seven. So there you have it. So whenever you have a trig function and it's inverse, um, being composed with one another, they normally cancel each other out. Now keep number one in mind and let's take a look at number two. Let's say we were to evaluate cosine of the inverse sine of three over five. So this is a problem on the consideration. Now if you compare number one and two, you notice a difference. Number one, we have a function and it's inverse, right? But in number two, this two, they are not inverses of one another, so we have a problem, okay? So how do we uh, solve this? How do we evaluate this situation? Well, the goal is to make the outer and inner functions inverses of one another. So can I rewrite inverse sine x as an inverse cosine? The answer is absolutely. How do you do that? All right, let's go ahead and rewrite the function. We have cosine of the arc sine of three over five. Now remember we indicated earlier that there are different ways you can express the inverse sine function. So take a look at this right here. We have inverse sine, which is of course opposite over hypotenuse. So since we have inverse sine, we can easily see that this is opposite and this is hypotenuse. 
So if I wanted to change inverse sine to um, inverse cosine so we can have cancellation actions happening, what are we going to do? Well, we can clearly see that inverse sine of the opposite of a hypotenuse is equal to the inverse cosine of adjacent of a hypotenuse. Okay, so let's write down the formula that's going to help us to carry out the needed conversion so we can um, evaluate the expression by cancellation. So we have inverse sine of the opposite of a hypotenuse as the same thing as the inverse cosine of the adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so in this in this scenario right here we have the uh, cosine, the original problem, the cosine of the arc sine of 3 over 5 using this formula this is equal is going to be equal to cosine of what? cosine of the let's change colors here inverse cosine of the adjacent cosine of the inverse cosine of the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse okay so if we can rewrite this argument here this angle as inverse cosine of a ratio of two numbers then we are good to go okay so we can see that um, opposite is 3 okay and our hypotenuse is 5 for the, in order to solve this problem guess what we need the adjacent the adjacent is an unknown okay so let's go ahead and figure it out what formula relates to three these three measures we we'll talked about that earlier it is the um, Pythagorean theorem right so let's say you have a right triangle um, let's say this is the angle the reference angle theta the opposite is 3 the hypotenuse is 5 and th we're looking for the adjacent now this is a Pythagorean triple so you should you could tell that this is going to be 4 okay so let's just act as though we don't know what A is. So we want to find A <clears throat> because you do not always have Pythagorean triples. All right, so let's find A. For A, we're going to use the formula. What formula are we going to use? The Pythagorean trip, um, the Pythagorean theorem, the trig version, adjacent square plus opposite square equals hypotenuse square. If you do not like this one, you can just use a square plus b square equals c square. Remember that c is always the hypotenuse. Okay. All right. Let's substitute a as our unknown a square plus opposite. Three square equals five square. Let's simplify. Adjacent square plus nine equals twenty-five. To get a isolated, we're going to go ahead and subtract nine from both sides. Uh, that yields um, adjacent square equals 25 minus 9 is 16. Take the square root of both sides and you have adjacent A is equal to 4. Okay, notice we indicated that earlier that it's a Pythagorean triple so our adjacent should be 4. Okay. Now that we have our adjacent, we are ready to proceed with the implementation of this original formula that we stated here. So, uh, let's rewrite the problem. We have uh, cosine of the arc sine of 3 over 5. We said that it is equal to cosine of the inverse cosine of adjacent of a hypotenuse. We now know that the adjacent is 4. And the hypotenuse is 5. So what's next? We have two functions that are inverses of one another. That's beautiful. They take each other out. And we have our final answer, which is 4 over 5. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of um, trig functions, do give us a thumbs up, your positive feedback. 
is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this tutorial or any tree concepts in general, just please it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. We upload videos to our YouTube page on a weekly basis, so if you want notification of our uploads, just subscribe. Don't also forget to visit our website, matgotserve.com. A wide variety of resources can be accessed there. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.